Hello friends, this is Bill Haken, and this is our Friday edition of Coronavirus Comfort from the Word of God in Prayer. We're going to pick it right up where we left off yesterday in Philippians chapter 1. Remember, the book of Philippians is about rejoicing, joy, gladness. Eighteen times you find the words joy, rejoice, and gladness in this book. And I want you to see in verse 12, I'm going to read right now verses 12 to 18. And Paul the Apostle is thanking God as he's in prison. Imagine that. Paul's in prison and he's thanking God. I want you to listen carefully to what Paul says uh, from prison. I want you to know, brothers, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. So it's become evident to the whole palace guard that's talking about the palace of Caesar, the Roman palace, and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ from envy and strife, and some from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my chains. But the latter, out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or truth, Christ is preached. And in this I rejoice, yes, and will rejoice. Now, I forgot to remind you to get your Bible, so grab your Bible quickly, please. And I want you to underline a couple words here. I want you to underline the words rejoice in verse 18. He says, in that I rejoice and will rejoice. Paul said, I rejoice, I will rejoice. I want you to see that Paul had here a positive attitude in a very, very poor place. He was in prison. He was not in a good place. He was not in a happy place. He was in prison, and yet Paul testifies from the prison the truth of Romans 8, 28. He says, I want you to know, verse 12, the things that happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. What does Romans 8, 28 say? Whether therefore, Romans 8, 28 is, we know that all things, all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Paul could see that this had turned out for good. It had turned out actually for the furthering, for the, for the multiplying of the gospel. How could that be? Well, because there were people in the Praetorian Guard, the Roman Guard, they changed, they had soldiers that were chained to Paul for, on eight-hour shifts. And so there would be Two, shoulder, two new soldiers come in every six to eight hours. Sometimes it was six-hour shifts, sometimes eight-hour shifts, depending on which historian you read. But imagine that. Every six or eight hours, Paul had two new people chained to him that he could testify to, and he did. And actually, m many of them got saved. Many of Caesar's household, Paul testifies about this in another place, another letter, have got saved. God can save anybody, any place, any time. He can. You just need to believe that and pray that. Pray for God to save somebody that you don't think can get saved. God can save anyone. He saved Chuck Colson, who was the Watergate hatchet man for Nixon back in the day. He saved him. Yeah, he went to prison, but he got saved, and he founded prison fellowship, prison, that, that prison ministry. Chuck Colson's in heaven now, but God changed him from the inside out. Why? Because he can save anybody, and because somebody witnessed to him. That's why. So don't be afraid to witness. Paul said, everybody can see that my chains are in Christ. So here's the deal, folks. You can see, we can see the things that happen to us as either obstacles or opportunities. Yeah. Problems, like this COVID-19. That can be an obstacle or it can be an opportunity. You say, how is it an opportunity? Well, it's an opportunity to give hope to many people who are stuck at home. They have nowhere to go. They are bored. They're looking for some answers. The Bible has the answers. God's Word has the answers. And Paul here saw that even though he was in chains, and even though some of his Christian enemies, you say, that. That sounds like an oxymoron. Well, it's a sad oxymoron, but it's the truth. 
he had Christian enemies because how do I know that? He said, well, some people, some of the brethren in the Lord are much more bold to speak the word. That's the opportunity. They were more bold. They were emboldened to speak the word because of Paul. And he said, what about Christian enemies? Well, in verse 13, he says, some are preaching Christ from envy and strife. So Paul had those who envied him. He had those who didn't like him. And my friends, you're never going to have, you're never going to get everybody to like you. It's not going to happen. There's only one person who really needs to like us, and that's God. No. When I began preaching as a teenager, my dad told me, my dad was a Reverend William B. Haken, and I'm William M. Haken. He was the director of Mountain State Bible Camp, and he was a godly, spiritual man. He said, Billy, now when you preach, he said, you need to preach people. You need to preach to please God, not people. He said, if you preach to please people, he said, that doesn't work. You never please the people. He said, if you preach to please God, that's, your, that's what you're called to do. Preach to please God. And here's a perk. He said, you'll also please the people who are pleasing God. And so that's what I've tried to do. Preach to please God. That's what Paul was doing. He, he preached to please God. And he saw that when he went to prison for preaching the gospel, that his chains that some would see as obstacles actually made more opportunities. More opportunities. And he didn't care. He wasn't jealous. Folks, if we're believers, we're all on the same team. We're all on the same team as believers. And that's a hard thing to get across to people. Because people naturally divide themselves into all kinds of socioeconomic classes, into denominations, into races, into other. If you're a believer, I have some news for you. Here's a news flash. Every saved person, when the rapture takes place, the next event on God's prophetic timetable, when the trumpet sounds, we're all going to go. The dead in Christ will rise first, then we are alive and remain. We caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. So we're all going to be in heaven one day. Every believer, every saved person is going to be in heaven. So you might as well learn to get along down here because you're going to have to get along with people in heaven if they're saved. Now, the one good thing that we have going for us is that we'll have brand new glorified bodies and we'll also have holy sanctified minds and hearts and spirits. So all the... All the Old nature, rough edges will get be, be totally banished in heaven, all right? So that's a good thing. But we need to learn to get along right now. My father also used to quote this poem, To live above with saints we love, oh, won't that just be glory? To live below with saints we know, well, that's another story. And that's the sad reality. But we need to learn with God's help to love one another. And to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. To be thankful for somebody else's blessing. Be thankful when God blesses your neighbor, when God blesses your friend. Paul rejoiced. And Paul wasn't jealous of these other people preaching. He rejoiced. In fact, he says, what then? He says, only that in every way, in every way, no matter how it's being done, I rejoice because Christ is preached. He says, I rejoice and I will rejoice. So he rejoiced. Jesus Christ, when he's preached, he'll draw all men to himself. And what God wants you and me to do is not fuss and fight and argue with other believers about what the right and wrong way is to, to reopen churches. The church is not the building. The church is the body of Christ. Now, the buildings will get reopened in God's time, hopefully in the right way. But it's foolish to waste your time arguing because that, 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 that's counterproductive. Some people will want to worship online for a long time. That's okay. That's right. If the Holy Spirit leads you to worship online, that's right for you. If the Holy Spirit leads you to, to gather safely once churches reopen and to gather in the physical building, that's right for you. But don't look down your nose at a person who does it differently. All that does is make the devil happy. And God wants us to make him happy by our unity, by our love, by our oneness in Christ. By this, 
shall all men know you're my disciples if you love one another. Don't see the things that happen to you as obstacles. Be like Paul, with God's help, being full of the Spirit, see them as opportunities. And say, Father, how can I, how can I glorify you in, through this obstacle and be a blessing to other people? You say, what about me? God will provide people to be a blessing to you. Just you worry about pleasing God, and God will take care of you. If you don't have an online church to go to this Sunday, we're in a new series called Here's Hope. And I'm preaching from a great passage of Scripture about hope for uncertain times. In the book of Hebrews, it talks about things that are shaken, things that are being shaken. And they're being shaken so that things that cannot be shaken can remain. That's my topic. That's my that's my. Bible passage Sunday, things that are being shaken so that things that cannot be shaken. I trust you'll watch, and if you have your own online church to watch us later. We're on Facebook Live, Capital Bible, and also later on YouTube, Capital Bible. And if you have friends that maybe are not on Facebook, let them know about this on YouTube so that they can watch also, and you can help us spread God's word that way. God promised his word will not return to him empty but will accomplish the purpose for which he sends it, all right? Let's close with prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for your word. Use it like you promised you would. Save the lost, and I pray that you would encourage your people. Help us to see the obstacles that face us as opportunities to glorify you and to give you praise. I pray for the president, for the leaders of our country. Give them wisdom. Give them skill. Give them courage. I pray that you protect them from the evil one, protect them from those that would like to destroy them, protect their health, protect our nation from those that would like to destroy this country. And I pray that you would just help us to stand, speaking the truth in love, stand for righteousness and stand for you, and give out your word, wonderful words of life. I pray protection for the medical profession, for the doctors, the nurses, those Healthcare workers on the front lines, protect them from the, the plague. I pray that the plague could be stopped and that the vaccines, uh, the cures could be found. And I pray that uh, there could be order that would come out of all the chaos. We thank you for the wake-up call that you've sent our nation, sent the world. I pray that America would hear the wake-up call and repent and there would be revival in the land because we humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our sins. Comfort those right now that are discouraged. And I pray that you would lift their burdens, help them to cast their cares upon you, knowing you care for them. Thank you, Father, that you said you would never leave us or forsake us. So we give you praise for that. And we ask all this in the strong name of our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. It's in his strong name that I pray with thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you very much, friends. Tune in on Sunday, and I look forward to talking with you on Monday as we continue our studies in Philippians chapter 1.